There he is. <laughs> There's the address. Hello and welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. I've got a little bit of paperwork to do today and a little bit of hair pulling for the baby goats that I have just sold. So ADGA has a new thing where they want all of their registered bucklings to be DNA typed before their progeny can be registered. Personally, as a breeder, I like to do this for the people that buy my goats just so I know that they're ready to go when they leave my house. But this is something that anyone can do. You don't have have to be the breeder and so I'm gonna walk you through it. I am using the ADGA website for this because they're the ones that want to have it on file but you can also get a goat DNA typed through other registries and I'm pretty sure through Davis Labs directly but don't quote me on that. We're gonna go through ADGA and this is what it looks like when I log in. So we've got so far I am going to go up here where it says DNA quests and other performance programs can be submitted online using this application and when we click that this screen pops up and what we're looking for is a, this DNA order form. And this is what this order form looks like on the ADGA website. So you're gonna fill this out with your name, the membership ID, your email, the date of your request. You gotta to agree to some payment information. It does cost a little bit of money. And then down here, we'll put in the information for all the goats that I'm going to be pulling hair on. There's three little bucklings today. I happen to have all the boys' registrations numbers here. You do want to register the goat before you pull hair. They need to know which goat to assign the DNA profile to. So we'll start with Rodeo. I've got to put in his registration number. This is his registration number in the last part of his registered name. And then I'm going to click on the DNA test request. As you can see, you can get a couple different tests run at the same time. They each have different costs. But all we're worried about is the DNA today. We are submitting a hair sample and we can go ahead and fill this out for multiple goats. I have three today, so I'm going to fill out the form for all three. Each test costs $35, so they've got the payment schedule down here for the different tests that you can do. A lot of you know that I have done the Alpha S1 casein test on some of my does. That's an option as well. After we're done filling in all the animals that we're going to pull hair on, we're going to click Submit. And now they let us know that they're going to email us with the proper forms to send in. All right, while we wait for the ADGA to do whatever they need to do on their back end to send us the forms, I'm gonna go out and get the samples. So what I have here are three different envelopes. It doesn't matter how big they are. They could be small like this if you like, or they could be regular size envelopes. What's important is that you don't wanna put your hair sample in a plastic bag. We're going to be pulling hair out by the roots and the root bulb on the end of the hair does have a little bit of moisture, but that's where the DNA is. If we put it in a plastic bag and don't allow that to breathe, that can degrade the DNA sample. So paper envelope is best. I've got each goat name on the envelope and now we need to go collect our samples. Coming after our first little baby. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Rodeo is loving the fact that the sun is out right now. So we're gonna grab him, get his sample. Can you get out? Yep. Okay, he can get out. So we're gonna do this with him in my lap, and that's okay. It's just a little bit easier if you've got multiple hands, or if you don't, if you can get them in some kind of head catch. But he's too small for that. I think the other boys are bigger for sure. But there's a couple different locations where you can pull for hair on your goat. And some of the better ones are behind the shoulder here and on the back leg right here. This is my favorite spot. It seems to be a little bit less tender for them. And so what I'm gonna do, I've got a little comb in my back pocket. I wanna comb out any loose hairs or any stray hairs that might not be his. Make sure that we're getting a good hair pull of just his hairs. And we're looking to get about 20 to 30 hairs. So we may have to do a couple pulls. It's not gonna be his most favorite thing, but it's what they require. This little cutie has gotten to keep all of his parts and pieces, including his horns. And so this is his first kind of experience of the pain of being a registered goat, huh? I've got some pliers here and we're going to 
pinch as close as we can to the skin without actually pinching his skin. And I've heard both things, that you pull with the direction of the hair growth or you pull against the direction of the hair growth. I think probably pulling with the direction of the hair growth hurts a little bit less, but as long as you get the bulbs, that's what's important. I know, buddy. Yeah, you didn't like that? Oh, I know. So we've got a collection of hairs here. It's really hard to see if I've gotten any follicles or root bulbs. But I'm going to put this in the envelope with his name. This is Rodeo. I know, bud. Something to note, too. You don't want to be touching the root bulbs at all. Do your best to just take it from the goat, leave it on your pliers, and put it straight into your envelope. All right, I've stuck him back in with Mama. But I'm going to do my best to show you the bulbs on the ends of these hairs. Hopefully you can see them at all. There's like a little white, almost looks like pieces of skin. That's what we're looking for. That's where his DNA is. Straight in the envelope and get our other boys sampled. Now in between sampling, I want to make sure that there's nothing left on these pliers because we don't want Rodeo's DNA getting mixed up with the other boys. Same thing with the comb. Let's see if you fit in here. Can you get out? Here, can you get out? No, I think he's stuck. That's good. Yeah, he's not super thrilled about this. But it's all right. <laughs> Here's Walter. I've got a few hairs there. It's not enough for what I need, but it's fine to pull multiple samples to get as many as we need, which is 20 to 30 hairs with the root bulb on it. Walter, all done. This is Amigo. He really hates the setup here, so we'll go fast. But same deal, clean comb. Make sure he doesn't have anyone else's hair in our collection spots. I know you don't realize it, but you're okay. Oof. This one's rough, but we got it. Might have, might have pulled too many at once with that one, but he's okay. Oh, got quite a few there. And that's the sampling process. And it looks the exact same no matter what hair test you're doing. You pull hair in the same way, in the same places. Dude, it's okay. Gracious. All right, so miracles do happen. And the ADGA got the paperwork over to me in my email same day, which I feel like isn't usual for them. And it might be the time of year that I'm doing it. I know that in busier times, sometimes they can take up to a week to get your paperwork emailed to you. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna blur out some identifying information. And this page, we don't do anything on. This is gonna go with the hair sample. The next page gives us a little label that we're going to affix to our hair samples. I have done this a couple different ways in the past. I think they've requested this a couple different ways in the past. I've done it where you had to tape your envelope to the page and then mail that in. They've changed things up a little bit, but that's okay. We'll do what we're told. This one here is for Walter and I'm going to staple it to Walter's envelope. Amigo's label, Amigo's envelope. Why do I have two Walters? I hope they gave me one for Rodeo. There's Rodeo. Okay, crisis averted. Proper label for Rodeo. And now I'm gonna mail these all in the same envelope. Remember, if your envelope weighs more than an ounce, it's gonna need two stamps. It'll need more than that if it's more 
than a couple ounces, I'm sure. So I'll weigh mine to make sure. But before I pack everything up, I wanna make sure that I am putting the address on the envelope. You can probably also look it up online, but this just makes it easier. There's the address. Got all three pages for the goats and all three samples for the goats. Less than an ounce. Now I will say, if you are worried about the ADGA potentially losing the sample, I'd worry a little bit less about it since it's going straight to UC Davis. They're usually pretty good about not losing mail. Sometimes the ADGA can be a little bit questionable with that. But if you wanted to play it safe, and let's say you're planning to sell the goat or something, you can take a second sample and just keep it in your house. Remember, you don't wanna be storing it in plastic, but you can store it in the envelope for quite a long time. I think over a decade and the genetic material will still be good. So I'm just going to put a stamp on this, put my return address and get this out in the mail. And that should be it. As far as I know, ADGA isn't going to be sending you any kind of confirmation or anything. Their information on the website will just be updated when the DNA is on file. And that's that. That is how to hair sample your goat and send it in to Davis Labs. Again, not just for DNA, but for things like the Alpha S1 casein test, which I want to do on a couple more of my girls, but I've got to wait a little while. If you have any questions, please leave them for me down below. I'll see y'all again soon.